Welcome to my journey. Welcome to my journey. I'm alone. Welcome to my journey. Welcome to my journey. I'm alone. I want to talk about um, the show East New York. I watched this show Sunday night and the reason I love, or at least the reason it intrigued me is because I am from East New York. Look at me. I'm from East New York, Brooklyn. Ray, born in Brownsville. My family's from Brownsville, Brooklyn. We moved to East New York, Brooklyn. We have a unique history. I went to public school there. And then went to public school, went to, went to high school in Flatbush. I watched the show. First disclaimer, I'm biased about it because it's my hometown. So, you know, what I'm talking about is basically not necessarily the validity of the story because it's all Hollywood. It's just for, you know, dramatization. I'm going to tell you my problems with shows like that overall. If anybody cares, I care about talking about this and I think the bigger universe of YouTube wants to hear this. I live in Brownsville now, right? Been in Brownsville over 20 years. My, my mother, my grandmother, my family were all from, you know, lived there for a while. Brooklyn's Finest was shot in Brownsville, in my building, in the whole surrounding areas and I wouldn't watch that movie. And it's giving me the same thing in East New York, the series that comes on CBS. Because I live in those conditions, Hollywood making stories about those conditions is not entertainment to me. Entertainment to me is escapism. I like to see the life that I'm not living to have something to shoot for than to find entertainment in the in the exaggerated life. Or oh, it's not, and it's not close. I mean, not close, excuse me. It's not far from accurate. It's not that far. It's, it's you know what I mean? It's exaggerated for Hollywood, but trust me, it, it's not too far from the truth. I don't find entertainment in that. I don't find entertainment in watching black people in bad conditioning because I live with black people in bad conditioning. I live in a poverty mindset. And what I felt when I watched the show East New York, right? Yes, the star or the, the, the police station that they're talking about is pretty much, you know, the fight for right, the good guys. But when it came to the residents, where that young lady was sent to live in the building with the rest of the people in the projects. And the people in the projects were blasting music and stuff. And she came outside to tell them to stop. And they made sure to be an asshole to her. Get out of here, copper. And they poured something on her. And she's a cop. And she's like, I'm going to write you a ticket. Then when she writes them a ticket, because they were breaking the law, now they're the victims. They're the victim of her now. I'm like, yo, black people want it both ways. You want to be invested in being fucked up. And then if anybody wants to correct you, they're the problem. And that's the way I live with people like that. You think they'll stop pissing in the elevator? You think they'll stop writing on the walls? No matter how many times they paint, no matter how many times they want to improve, there's always the black people that this is too nice. This is too good for us. Piss in the elevator, spit on the floor. Just nasty. And you're like, who lives like this? People that got nothing live like this. People that got nothing live like this. People that want nothing live like this. People that expect nothing live like this. You know what I'm saying? I live here because it's cheap. I wish I could afford to live more, but I don't want to. New York ain't worth the money that it's charging. I'm, I hate to tell you people paying thousands and thousands for rent, but you know it ain't worth it. You know it ain't. So why? Why do you look at poverty as inter? It is entertaining. I ain't gonna front. When you live better than the people that you're showing, it's entertainment. But I don't live better than that. So it's not. It's just a mockery. And on top of that, it shows the worst of us. And on top of that, they not lying. They not lying. I, I, they are not lying about the worst about it. And I'm not going to disagree. 
You got all these people in up in arms, like the church and everybody that don't want East New York portrayed like that. But that basically, baby, that is it. And people don't like what they look like, especially people that look that are fucked up. They don't like the mirror held up to them. They hate it. And that's why I stay by myself out here. I don't say nothing to nobody. Okay? Anything. Because people like to, you know, create little fantasies about you that I, I, don't, I don't have time to dissect. I don't have time to disprove. I don't care about none of it. I want to stay safe. I want everyone to feel loved. And I would like for the trauma of slavery to start to get some healing because this is generational. What, what people are going through mentally has to do with the trauma of slavery that's in the DNA. And I believe that wholeheartedly. The black on black, the colorism, the everything, that's white supremacy at work. But the truth of the matter is a lot of people are in love with it. More people are in love with their bad habits than they want to change them. I understand that the older people get, the less they're willing to change. And so we come from, or at least in my area, there's passed down fucked upness. It's passed down. And when nobody else is doing it the right way, they look at you like, why do I have to do it? Nobody else does it. You'll never improve because nobody will do it. Well, it starts with you doing it. You do it, then they do it, and you encourage other people to do the right thing because we want to live in better conditions. But no, not everybody wants better conditions. That's the, that's the first myth of black people I had to untangle. Stop believing that my betterment is what other people want. You understand? Stop fight, stop crusading for people that you'll put up a statue, they'll knock it down the next day. You'll, you'll paint up the graffiti, they'll come graffiti it within 24 hours. You mop up the piss, they come back to pee on the floor. Stop giving to this because it's going to deplete me. These people are fine being the way they are. I got to find people that want to be more like me instead of trying to get the people that aren't like me to be more like me. And that's the way, that's that's where the loner thing had to come from. Like, I, I just can't have any friends because too many people are invested in what's not serving them mentally, not serving them emotionally. You understand they're very they're very angry, they're very prone to violence. They have they don't give respect but demand respect. That is a weird dichotomy. How are you coming at me real nasty and then if I get defensive, now you get real flexy. You got to always worry because some people aren't mentally, you know, they don't have mental discipline. And that means they don't have the wherewithal to say is this worth really a fight? No. They don't want to say that. They'll be like, I got disrespected. I'm going to fight you. And you're like, but I'm a stranger. How could I actually disrespect you? I don't really know you. But you know what, though? All in all, a lot of people never heard of East New York, Brooklyn. You know? So I'm happy that the branding is getting out there. And before Brooklyn Finest, I don't know if people even knew Brownsville. But again, what are those scenes about, right? Those scenes are about drug dealing, rapes, murder, you know, undercover action, police activity, a dirt, you know, Brooklyn Finest was about a dirty cop in an area that helps, you know, helps foster that. And the area helps foster that. I can't disagree that that happens, but I won't find it entertaining. I don't find power entertaining. I don't find, there's a lot of things I don't find entertaining because entertainment should be escapism. I want the best that a, that a life that I can't reach to. I don't like porn in my drama. Okay. When I start to see sex scenes that are out of like, I'd rather watch porn than have porn in the drama. It doesn't help the story. It doesn't. I'm watching I'm watching Power with a, my grandma and families and there's some scene with this guy having sex with girls in his office comes. I'm I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to see this. I'm having a tingling that I don't understand and I don't want to be in a I don't want to be in a group feeling like this. And yeah, a lot of black shows I don't I have no interest in watching because it's about it's, it's always about that. It's so predictable. It's so predictable that I have no interest in it. And that's how I feel about East New York. It's everything predictable that I thought it was, okay? And it's, and it's, and it's nothing new. Not to me, anyway. 
So, you know, I hope it lasts. I don't want it to go off the air. I know that it could get better. But, you know, dramas about poverty in an area that I live in is not entertaining to me. It's entertaining to people that don't live there. It's entertaining to people that have no idea what East New York is about. But it's not entertainment to me. So that's my spill, Miss Taylor 1976. Thanks for following. Please be sure to like, scan, subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.